He's won three consecutive Vuelta a Españas. He pretty much had the Tour de France in the back, if not for a freak performance from Tadej Pogacar. And he's an Olympic champion. But what's his story? Why did he decide to hang up the skis? And what's the limit for what he can achieve in cycling? He's won practically everything except the Tour de France, and his time's running out for the 33-year-old. Let's dive in to the unlikely story of Primoz Roglic. My dream was, of course, uh, to, to be the best in ski jumping. Uh. Roglic shares the trait of many professional athletes and businessmen today. No matter what he did, he wanted to be the best. He achieved good results at the junior level, winning the silver medal at the 2006 World Championships and winning gold the following year. He even went on to win two Continental Cups, which is the second highest level of competition in international ski jumping. However, things didn't turn out the way he wanted them to. Of course, I just uh, probably didn't have uh, like the respect or the fear that I needed. At a competition in 2007, Roglic had a horrific crash. Just after leaving the ramp, he lost his balance and fell face first to the ground. Following this incident, he spent the next three years obsessed with becoming even better. But while his body had recovered, his mind hadn't. I just felt it like uh, yeah, maybe it's just time that uh, I change, uh, I move on and uh, yeah, I leave that uh, behind me. Acknowledging that he'd probably never be the best at ski jumping, he hung up his skis for good. This, as we know, would turn out to be a life-changing decision for the better, but at the time, Roglic wasn't sure what to do next. The thing is, I didn't even have a bike before I was 21 years old. What he decided to do next would drastically change his life. He sold his motorbike and bought himself a road bike. He started going on rides and found a natural liking to the sport. He quickly dove headfirst into cycling, wanting to become the best. He put in the work required and he was noticed by local Slovenian team, Adria Mobile. As you'd expect, the transition from one sport to the next wasn't quick and didn't go all that smoothly for Primoz Roglic. Except for an incredible third place in the mountains classification in his home race, the Tour of Slovenia a race he wanted to make his mark on. He continued to work hard and putting in the miles. While the sports of ski jumping and cycling are similar in terms of what's required of the athlete, the endurance in cycling is something that needs to be built up over time. And entering the sport at 23 years of age, Primus had to have patience. And that patience paid off in 2014 when he found himself in the attack with William Clark at the second stage of Tour of Azerbaijan. It was an undulating stage that came down to a two-up sprint for the win. Roglic led from the front and a tired Clark couldn't get around him. First victory of many in the bank for Roglic. He continued the season with strong results at Tour of Sibiu in Romania and at a one-day race, Croatia-Slovenia. However, Roglic's breakthrough year was upon him in 2015. He had an all-around good result but the one that made Dutch World Tour team Team Lotto NL Jumbo sign the Slovenian was stage three of his home race. It was a grueling mountaintop finish, and several strong riders were at the start list, such as Mikel Nieve, Jan Polank, Diego Alisi, and Mara Finetto. Roglic attacked with four kilometers to go, and it was only Nieve and his teammate Regina who could follow. Nieva proceeded to ride from the front to try and shake off the two Adria Mobile riders, but couldn't. Roglic came around in the last 50 meters to take the stage win and make a massive statement to the world. Roglic the ski jumper was now Roglic the mountain goat. I don't think ever a ski jumper made it to professional cycling, so that's pretty special. Everyone knew Roglic could climb well, as shown by his stint at Adria Mobile. But what really shocked the world is how well he could time trial. And he's gonna post the best time, 11.03, the clock stops. Tobias Ludvigsen must depart the hot seat and acknowledge that he's been beaten by a better man on the day. What a ride from Primoz Roglic. Later that same Giro, Roglic would win his first Grand Tour stage. His debut season was full of excitement. He placed second in a stage in Volta Catalunya, barely losing to Alexei Sadovic in a two-up sprint. No, Sadovic, the Russian, is there. Sadovic, surely he's going to take it. Oh, a little premature celebration. He made his country proud by winning the National Time Trial Championships and finishing 10th in the Rio Olympics time trial. Roglic said, I'm still discovering where I'm the best. And you could tell, while he was good, 
he wasn't great yet. The following year put Roglic on the map with the mainstream media. It's one thing to perform well in the Giro d'Italia, but can you do it where it matters most? The Tour de France. Stage 17 of the Tour de France was a hard one. It featured legendary climbs such as Croix de Fer, Col de Telegraph and Col de Galibier. It would take a Herculean effort to win this stage as the GC battle was in full swing. However, Roglic was hungry. Just a few days prior, he had finished fourth, losing to Bokimolema. Not today. He attacked early and built a small gap, which he extended on the descent thanks to the now banned Aero Tuck. Roglic raised his arms as he crossed the finish line in Cerro Chevalier. He'd made history. Not only was it his first Tour de France win, it was Slovenia's first Tour de France win as well. Somehow, it feels nice to become the first Slovenian stage winner of the Tour de France. But it's also crazy that I'm the man who can make some cycling history for Slovenia, as I was not a cyclist until I turned 22. I was probably dreaming of winning a Tour de France stage, and that's why I started cycling. But dreaming is one thing, the reality is another. His 2017 season as a whole was quite impressive. He had 5 stage wins, 6 top 5 GC finishes, and won the general classification in Algarve. He even earned his first World Championships medal, coming second in Bergen behind once again Tom Dumoulin. After two years in the professional peloton, rumblings started to arise if Primoz Roglic could win the yellow jersey in the Tour de France. With his incredible ability to both climb and time trial, he's got the perfect skill set to compete. In the lead up to the 2018 Tour de France, Roglic won three impressive back to back to back general classification wins. First in the Basque Country, then Tour de Romandy, and lastly in his home race of Tour of Slovenia. Team Lotto and El Jumbo surrounded him with talent such as Tony Martin, Steven Kreuzweg and Robert Hessink. It was time to see what he was made of. For a first proper go at the Tour de France, he impressed. His team was okay but not great. He kept up when needed and attacked to make the race exciting. Had he not lost a minute in the team time trial, he would have been on the podium. The one who's been leading all the way and he's still you know, working quite hard and seems like he is gaining time here on the other favourites. Roglic crosses the line, victorious, takes a stage win to add to what could possibly be a podium finish by the end of this race. If the last three years were the acceleration down the ramp, then 2019 was the year that Roglic let go and flew the distance winning the Vuelta a Spagna and finishing third in the Giro d'Italia. This puts you in the same category as legends Alberto Contador and Chris Froome. Roglic dominated the season outside the Grand Tours as well, winning the GC in the UAE Tour. Roglic is going to hit the front! Primoz Roglic! Crowning glory! Torino Adriatico, Romandy. Roglic digging in, he's got Costa with him as well, you can't, they're not going to be hit this time. Uh, Garrett Thomas I believe is beaten, it's going to be Roglic who comes to the line. Oh, phenomenal effort by Roglic! Primoz Roglic, the ski jumper, lands another one! Emilia and Varasin. Moss gone, uh, what's he got left? And the answer's nothing, and Roglic just folds over. Uh, everybody turns a new page and says, you know what? You should have known this was coming. Then went. That's what I mean. He just turns the page and says, I'll stick another one down for me. Thank you very much. However, it was also the first year that it was made obvious that Roglic has a problem staying on the bike. He crashed twice, once in stage 6 and the other more seriously on stage 15, almost flying over the barrier. Despite dominating the time trials, winning the opening stage and stage 9, he just didn't have it. A lot of things have happened. I had a lot of problems, and like I said, I didn't feel great after stage 14 anymore, Roglic said. Despite not having it, he still conquered the podium with a last day time trial to secure an 8 second gap over Lander. So at the end, with all problems I had, it's just a win to finish on the podium in Verona. And with the podium in the back, Roglic also said this when asked about the rest of his calendar. I'm just tired, if I'm honest. I don't feel so good anymore after the short stage. It was a big fight in the end, he continued. First, I'll do some holidays and then we'll see. A couple of months later, a well-rested Roglic took on the Vuelta. Here's how he won it. Roglic tucking in. Lopez not quite with it just for the time being now. Can Roglic get back at it? Valverde coming up to the crest. Is he going to get to the line first? Roglic wants some of it, does he? Oh, and the world champion crosses the line. Before, indeed, on this time trial, which has been dominated by Primoz, Roglic 
nothing slow about the Slovenian. Just check this out. This is amazing. Look at the time. He almost bust 47, a 47.05. Taken one, don't forget, in the time trial. Borgaccio has already taken one up a mountain. He's done it yet again. And here we are doing it for Slovenia, doing it for themselves, and doing away with their rivals. What a ride. Slovenia, top of the world. And the red jersey's been down. Primoz Roglic has been into the wall there. And I'm afraid that there are other riders down, and that does not look good. And Primoz Roglic, the Slovenians are on the scene. Independent for not even three decades. But tomorrow, barring incident or accident, after all the drama of the Giro, the lack of support, he has survived the trials and tribulations here in Spain. And Primoz Roglic, for him, the transition will be complete. The fairy tale had come true. The ski jumper turned cyclist, the rider who just wanted to be the best, had become first Slovenian rider to win a Grand Tour. He was also Jumbo Visma's first Grand Tour win. Everyone was in ecstasy. Interestingly, this win also sent a message to the sports directors at Jumbo, who had just signed his time-trialing rival Tom Dumoulin to a contract. Don't you dare not ride for me in the next Tour de France. The 2020 season was all a bit of a scramble due to races being cancelled or postponed. It led to a very late Tour de France, but oh boy it'd be a good one, possibly one of the best of all time. Roglic started the season as always, great results, until the Dauphiné where he crashed again, forcing him to DNS, casting doubts over his Tour de France participation. The lack of fear that forced Roglic to ditch ski jumping for cycling seems to still be ingrained deep within him. Despite winning the Vuelta España in the prior season, he still crashed in that race too. The day of the tour rolled around, and Primoz took to the start, alongside one of the strongest Jumbo Visma teams ever. Here's the incredible story of how that race unfolded. Roglic to the line, another stage win, the third in his career at the Tour de France. Pogacar finishing second, and a third place in the end, with bonus seconds just about going for Guillaume Martin. And Lander the strongest, bonus seconds at the top, five and two. The bonus nearly ended up. Would anybody give him a chance? 200 meters to go and he launched his sprint from the back. Here she was looking good, but he was up against fresher legs. He hit the front with 150 meters to go, but it would be Roglic and then Pogacar to get in front of him. Tadej Pogacar winning for Slovenia, just as Roglic had done two years before. Still out the front with 250 meters to go, but then it'd be Pogacar in the white jersey to storm ahead. Sitting second in the overall general classification and looking to pull something back on his compatriot. Four bonus seconds of what he took back. Roglic second, Port coming over in third. Look behind on the radio, and this was the reason. Primoz Roglic was on the way, followed by Tadej Pogacar. Lopez heading towards the virtual general classification podium. Roglic on the way to increasing his lead. Up towards the podium. And Primoz Roglic extending his lead, taking six bonus seconds. Added to the 15 he would put into Pogacar on the line. And amazingly, Wout van Aert have made it back into the group. He'd take them out of the reach of the GC guys, meaning that it would be another day with the same lead for Primoz Roglic and a day closer to Paris. Roglic on the road, still losing time, and a lengthy bike change here, not looking good for the former ski jumper. And it was at this point, at just under 4Ks from the finish line for Roglic, that he started to lose the tour. And with Pogaccia absolutely putting heck loads of time into Tom Dumoulin, it looked as though he was going to take the stage by this point as the Jumbo Visma riders looked on horrified. It was clear he was also doing the unthinkable. Hammering Jumbo Visma, whose boss had already said they were 95% certain to win the Tour. Poor Roglic would have been feeling it. You would not have wanted to be in his place. Legs giving up on him and Roglic over the line having lost the Tour de France. A dramatic From being around. a minute up going into the last real stage to being in second by a minute. What happened? 
he didn't have any crashes to be aching from. Maybe he was spending so many days in yellow and the pressure upon him. Or Pocketshaw was just on a flyer. This will forever be the one that slipped through Rockledge's fingers. If I look back at the tour, while second place was frustrating at the time, it's still a great result. I told my teammates that our victory showed how strong we were as a team, our combined strength and the way we controlled the race. That was what we wanted to do before the start, and that is what we managed to put in place. Of course, I didn't win, but sometimes you win and sometimes you lose. When you've done everything you can, you have to accept it. Rocklich bounced back nicely with what can only be described as a revenge tour. He won La Douyenne, Liege Piston Liege, in a four-up sprint. This time, it was Alaphilippe who was made to look silly when he celebrated too early and Rocklich pipped him on the line. Following that, he took a second consecutive Vuelta Espana win, beating Carapaz, fulfilling his revenge from the Giro prior. There's almost some sort of sixth cycle to Rocklich's racing. One, dominate the early races such as Basque Country, Tirreno Adriatico or Paris-Nice. Two, perform well early in the Tour de France. Three, have a KG crash in the peloton. Four, be aching from it. Five, don't recover fully and lose time. Six, DNS. Seven, rest up. Eight, win late in the season. In 2021, it was only on stage three that Roglic crashed. One he wouldn't recover from, forcing him to DNS the Tour de France yet again, throwing away what was a promising early start to the season. But Roglic isn't a quitter, he is a true Rocky Balboa. It's not about how hard you hit, it's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. Only a month after the Tour de France, Roglic won the Olympic time trial gold medal in Tokyo, beating his arch nemesis now turned teammate Tom Dumoulin who said this, Primoz was on another planet today. Roglic continued his space travel as he won four stages in the Vuelta Espana and easily securing the red jersey, four minutes ahead of Enric Mas. Primoz Roglic back in the red jersey. Roglic goes on the attack in the red jersey and Roglic all oh, broadsides it. Roglic crashed yesterday, bounces back today, wins stage 11. Primoz Roglic is cracking Egan Bernal. Primoz Roglic has been majestic on the roads today. He takes his eighth stage win in La Vuelta. He's going to be in the red jersey. A bit of history for Primoz Roglic. He wins the time trial. He wins La Vuelta. It's a hat trick for Primoz Roglic. Took a nice day uh, and uh, yeah, nice three weeks. So uh, super glad uh, and happy uh, yeah, for myself and uh, for the, my guys. Around. He was winning everything except the one that mattered the most. 2022 followed the Roglic equation once more. Wins in Pyrenees and Dauphiné, but crashing out of both the Tour de France and the Vuelta a España. One question has to be asked. Why is he unable to stay upright? In the past, rumors of widespread tramadol usage has been linked to strange crashes, like Chris Froome crashing going uphill in the Giudi Italia. However, with his painkiller now being banned, we have to look elsewhere. Roglic has blamed other riders for his series of crashes. Research shows that the rider's cycling behavior is to blame for a crash in about half the cases, not breaking, but pushing through. This thesis has been echoed by other cyclists, such as Peter Sagan who famously said this, The younger generation lacks that respect. You see, you feel it, in the past you had the unwritten rules in the race, now forget it. This is total anarchy in here. And on the more funny side, he also said this, Everyone pees on everyone. Nasty. Whatever the root cause, it's a shame. Roglic is so talented, but due to his significant number of crashes, he often gets overlooked in the conversation of the greats. The Tour de France of 22 would have heard in particular for Roglic, as his lieutenant and teammate Jonas Vinegar bested Tadej Pogacar to win the yellow jersey, something Roglic would have envisioned himself doing with the full support of Jumbo. In an attempt to break the Roglic cycle, and most likely out of the respect for his teammate Vinegar, Roglic has decided to target the Giro Italia and Volta Espana this year, giving up the stress and malarkey that is the Tour de France. All in all, probably the right call. He started the season strongly, winning Tirreno Adriatico and Catalunya. 
he's coming off the back of an incredible win in the Giro d'Italia, where at times he looked like he struggled, however his reliable time trying skills saw him take back the pink jersey from Geraint Thomas on the penultimate day. Now the question beckons, can he win the Vuelta a España? The answer to that is most likely yes. However, he'll have to contend with a hungry Remco Evenepoel who'd had to leave the Giro d'Italia early. A fourth Vuelta win would cement him in the history books. But how much do you think he would exchange all those wins for just one single Tour de France yellow jersey? The problem for Roglic now is that the ship has most likely sailed for as long as he stays at Jumbo. Jonas Vinegar is in the shape of his life and at just 26 years of age, the defending Tour de France champion will receive all resources from the team to secure the win in the future. For Roglic to get another shot at the Tour, he most likely has to change teams. But where would he go? He wouldn't go to UAE as they've got Pogaccia, nor would Quickstep take him as they've got Evnepol. He's been rumored to Team Ineos, where he would absolutely fit, but his agent has dismissed that recently. His contract is valid through 2025, he can either see it through or buy himself out, but we struggle to see where he would go. Perhaps Primus Roglic will be one of the greatest Grand Tour riders to never win a Tour de France, joining the likes of Nara Quintana and Richard Virenque.